Hi everybody, you join us today when something that has took such a long time to do, I can't believe it's took about six or seven years, it's actually got, it's me say, I've actually got around to doing an audio fan commentary for an episode of Columbo. And it's one of those episodes as well. I know sometimes when you've got something like Columbo, and there's, actually I don't know how many episodes of Columbo there is, that's actually kind of terrible that I don't know that. I mean, just say for all you say, there's like about 50 or something like that. And if somebody said, like, what is your favourite episode of Columbo athletes just saying there, Peter Falk as... Oh. That's what I did just say. Columbo. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I, I, did, I honestly didn't think that was a, a that long a gap until the title card came on. Double Exposure by Universal City Studios. Uh, yeah, but if somebody said... Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was natural. <laughs> no, but... Um, if somebody said that, like, what's your favourite episode of Columbo? Like, say, if there was, like, three episodes or something, you know, you go, oh, it's probably this one or something. But, like, when there is, like, about 40 episodes or something, and, and sometimes you think, oh, well, these are the ones that I grew up with, or I like these later ones, or the first one was really good, or I've even got a soft spot for that last one, like, Columbo likes the nightlife and things like that. But there's something about this episode... And it's the same with that one with the um, Leslie Nielsen in, where the where the person comes in through the window, the security one. That starts with this like kind of like this weird like little piano riff and things like that, and that always takes me back to my childhood. And it's like with this, like they're seeing him like splicing the film together and things like that. And if it's because my dad, well, I've still got one, it's, it's uh, actually, yeah, my dad's actually got the splicer, I've got the projector. But I don't know if it is just because of, like, you know, being into film and, like, there, that shot there where he's watching the film game past kind of reminds me of Jewel. And I know, um, I think it was, like, a lot of Universal TV shows. I think The Incredible Hulk used footage of Jewel without Steven Spielberg's permission. So it's kind of almost like, uh, like I say, it just punches all my buttons and I say, I don't know if it was just one of those episodes. And what's funny there, that one subliminal image of like uh, a glass of Coke with a slice of lemon in it on a bed of ice. I don't know why. Like when I was watching this and I was, you know, picking, deciding which episode to do a commentary on, I was looking at that image thinking, what actually is it an image of? Uh, because it was kind of like, sort of, it, you know, it wasn't just instantly, you know, and then you've got like. The funny thing about this is it's meant to work subliminally. So you would it wouldn't seem to subconsciously register an image that I couldn't even tell what it was when it was on the screen for about ten seconds. But that's another thing as well, and you know, you know, hopefully it won't be on there for a long time. But touch wood, this should this should be on my gravestone board of him. Yeah, like I said, oh when people say it was before this, it was before that. But one thing I love about old episodes of Columbo, like and to be fair, what's not to love about old episodes of Columbo? But I feel like that's it's sort of because they nearly always use a bit of technology, uh, like there when you're just looking at the CCTV cameras. I always felt like because you know they needed new ideas for the show or to keep it fresh. Completely, uh, just completely my own theory on this, but I feel like any time there was a quote-unquote new invention like computers or timers on videos or mobile phones or anything like that, you would see it in an episode of Columbo. And it's like there with the CCTV. It's kind of like, I don't know um, if in 1973 that's when CCTV was invented. But I do kind of love the fact, though, that like, I remember when CCTV was getting quite big in the UK in like the 90s, and people, oh, it's like George Orwell, and it's political correctness gone mad and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, you watch old episodes of Columbo like this, and it's like 1973. Talk about like technology, though, and I must say this on loads of commentaries as well, but like there, I was using a phone with like about six lines. I don't think I've ever had a phone, and that, like there, oh, she's got a push button telephone, and this is not, not even a word of a lie. Do you ever find, uh, I don't think I used a push button phone in a person's house until like 1992 or something, or something like that. So we want second. <laughs> Just uh, I wasn't sure if the uh, cat could get in or out. It's uh, <laughs> the cat cameos continue, even though they weren't there. <laughs> Oh, 
That kind of reminded me a little bit there of Dennis Weaver talking about Jewel. But that's like another funny thing as well, like I probably said this on every other commentary, but I kind of love how like, there's this supposed meme of like, people not knowing what a corded phone is. And I've literally used a corded phone today. And it's one of them things though, where it's kind of like, how can people not know what one is or think that they like this dead old fashioned thing when nearly any phone I use, if I use it in any sort of practical sense, it's like nearly always got a cord attached to it, even though I've literally got uh, my mobile here, but it's like, you know. And it's like there though, that footage there, if, and I must have said this loads and loads of times. I was, I've said the phrase loads and loads, loads and loads of times just on this commentary. It's bad using the same word again. It's, um, it's, it's um, yeah, it's wrong. Just, but uh, I think sometimes you can just tell, like just how, especially in exterior shots, like, like an interior shot at the moment. But I think when you watch an old TV show, and especially anything older than like, 1999 you know because i think like a lot of new stuff we're still recent enough for it still look brand new but anything from like about the 2000s i think you can sort of tell oh that's like the 2000s the 90s or you know like say especially like 1999 and working your way backwards in there anything 80s i feel like you can tell something 80s instantly and like something like 70s like when you see that exterior shot and it was dark and you could just vaguely see a car going past. It really just felt 70s to me. I don't know if it purely just be imagination or just because I've seen this episode so many times and like I say, I grew up with it and stuff like that. And must be there when you've seen that caviar though, that that's always a funny thing that like, even to this day, I still have, you know, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not exactly loaded, I haven't tried caviar, but I think you can get some quite cheap caviar. Uh, like, you know, obviously that's beluga caviar and it's like with a fortune, but I'm sure you can get some like, some of the stuff that nobody wants. Like, I feel like I'm sure I've seen this in the supermarkets. I may have just imagined it. I love it when Columbo, though, actually, it starts eating it and um, he, uh, he, he has loads and he's like, oh, I bet like $80 worth. It's water today, folks, so hopefully this commentary will make sense. Imagine being trading places when they give the guy the tip and he's like, half of it was from me. <laughs> it's like five dollars or something. One thing about this Columbo though that I thought was kind of funny is the fact that like, like there he's got the murder weapon in the very same room that Columbo comes into. Like, you know, it's like, uh, it wasn't me, honest. Oh, that's one thing though as well. And like I just, you know, when I'm setting up the equipment and everything, and just let this episode play a bit beforehand. And obviously, like I said, I've seen this episode loads and just instantly picture just watching it by a four bar gas fire, you know, like in my parents' house and stuff like that. But cinemas like that, it almost reminds me of the room where Alex has the Ludovico treatment. But like I say, when I was just watching this, just when I was setting up the equipment, making sure everything was set up right. Oh, and that's that's kind of cool. It's a one for one for the books, but I've got I've set up a table. I've said this is like the very first I, of all the commentaries I've ever done and all the different configurations I've ever done commentaries I've done them with like you know groups of people on myself on phones and all different things and this is the very first time I've actually set all the equipment up very nice on one desk I've got the mic in front of me I've got the wires you know it's come, it can't be tripped over anything uh, and this is like the best the uh, the camcorder the camcorder the commentary stuff's ever been set up yeah but cinemas like that and even like that tape deck because I don't think it's like when I grew up, like when or where or both, uh, when I grew up in Staffordshire, a lot of buildings like there's the film theatre in Stoke, which is a little art cinema, and it's still there today. It's open today. I saw him tweet about a film that was on today, and because it's like it was a cinema that opened like 1974. I think this episode was broadcast in December 1973. And the film theatre in Stowe still looks so much like this. You've got like you know, that kind of style of curtains and that kind of style of carpet and everything. I can't believe as well that this is one thing though that I didn't use uh, didn't used to I didn't used to but I still do no but um, I never sort of really appreciated just how big thirty five millimeter projectors were. Like when you see them sometimes in a film or occasionally you might see one on like a, do you ever find, uh, on like a program for something 
and then it's only more recently when I've seen like cinemas that have been gutted or you'll see like an old disused projector or like those projectors there in that shot and it's kind of like wow they are so gigantic and I think that says something that even now I know it's slightly changed we're talking about gigantic there's the world's biggest CRT black and white television uh, but yeah with 35mm projectors I think you know obviously I well, believe even now there is still cinemas that project 35mm and uh, Dunkirk by uh, Chris Nolan's coming out on 35 and 70mm but when you hold 35mm film in your hand or if you look at like a couple of frames and you think the equipment needed to project a 35mm frame is like 6 foot tall a couple of feet wide in these these special uh, ventilating equipment so like you know they, all the fumes can go through the ceiling and everything it's like unbelievable really and I, I, one thing I do think is kind of funny about this episode though because it's so quaint in a lot of ways but like subliminal advertising I'm pretty sure it's been proven to not work but when you're watching this as a kid you think yeah that, that could actually work oh he's just he's just excusing himself well I say that just it'd be interesting to try and get a photo side by side but it just reminded me of the like I say the Ludovico uh, room in uh, Clockwork Orange What's always kind of funny though as well, because I can picture you, like my dad saying, or something like, like your parents, like when you're growing up saying, oh, that's stupid, I like it. You know, there's nobody about and stuff like that. But it's kind of funny to think there was literally no... But then again, that said, sometimes the film theatre, like, because they have, like, a little bit of a bar and it's open just before the film starts. But afterwards, like, you know, there's nobody in there, you know, so it's kind of has got a similar vibe to it, actually. It's that there, though. Like, what kind of... Like that, like I said before, I, I think say a lot of Columbo's they kind of, you know, quote unquote based in reality and like you know, like, like say any time some new technology comes out, they try and shoe on it in there. And I mean that like in a really good way. I, I just feel like it. That's always something that catches my attention. Excuse me. The more the years progress, like computers and mobile phones and and different things. But like there, did he have like a monitor that was connected to the projector, like? That was some high tech equipment for 1973. I guess it could have existed because, you know, like say, um, like when you know, these big film studios and things like that, and you know, I guess they might, you know, want to look at the screen as it's projecting and stuff. So maybe. I was actually thinking about this the other day, like there you can see that rocket taking off because I saw um, some cereal, and I know like cereals now don't have free gifts necessarily, but this one said something like. Went a trip to Kennedy Space Center or something like that, and um, this image they used on the front was a space shuttle. I was thinking they don't use space shuttles anymore, but they still go into space, like the International Space Station, and you know, as far as I know, that they still like launch new satellites and stuff like that. So I was thinking, do they use rockets? So we've gone all the way; it's gone back full circle. This was before space shuttles, and now after space shuttle. <laughs> Offered himself. <laughs> What's well, there's only certain words there. I guess it's probably a good thing, but uh, only ever here in Colombo and like ballistics is one of them. Well, I feel like only ever here in Colombo, it's always one of those words to get the ballistics checked out. It is funny though as well to think that like um, in the last video I did about like ventriloquist dummies they mentioned Mrs. Columbo and subconsciously I'm doing a Columbo maybe um, maybe that subliminal stuff does work and they want subliminal uh, <laughs> Have some of this out here. Caviar. Caviar. Um, I thought that was a bust of Beethoven then it'd be oh my god the coincidences keep rolling and Uh oh. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh. He did get it. He said, hey, "Come," he said, "I oh, better get out. You can get arrested." To be fair, the other guy did say, yeah, "I'll have some of this." What's funny though, because um, one of my favourite films is Cat's Eye, and there's one part in that where they say, um, "Mr. Norris" or yeah, "Mr. Norris, Norris, Mr. Norris" or something like that. And again, when I was just setting up the equipment and just sort of, uh, I mean, a sandwich before I started doing the commentary. Uh, Ham and crisp sandwich, uh, fag fans out there. Um, it was uh, when it got to this scene, and I just thought about oh, it just reminds me of a um, uh, cat's eye. And that's one thing I do think is funny. I don't know, like, say how different people's brains work and things like that. But I always feel like saying sometimes when somebody says a certain word or a certain phrase, if somebody says it in it, a certain style or a certain accent, I instantly think uh, it just instantly brings like another film or another TV show to mind. And that's one thing about Columbo, though. And I know loads of people have said it in the past, but I think you know something good is uh, worth repeating. Is that a phrase it is now? But like how Columbo is intended at the start and right at the very start of this, I was obviously talking over it, but why I changed that to a lifetime? Is they did this little mini like sort of, you know, what, coming up next on Columbo. Um, surely Columbo though is one of the few shows where you don't really need to see what's coming next because the beauty part of Columbo is that it doesn't start with Columbo and like how you do see the murder happen and then you have to see Columbo figure it out and it is kind of ludicrous, really, that Columbo is literally one of the best TV shows of all time. And, like, I also, again, when I was saying about, you know, putting the new technology in episodes of Columbo, I feel like that belittles it a little bit. Because it's like as if these episodes write themselves apart from that, which, of course, they don't. Our payphone there, just around the corner. But I do kind of feel, though, that, like, so many of the Columbos are so similar like you'd think after about like two or three series people would have got really sick of it and you know it was going all those years and everything it's amazing well that was one thing I was I meant to say that like um, like I almost feel like I've done a Columbo commentary before because I um, started doing this this hashtag called Columbo TV and uh, I think it's like once a month like I think it's like the third Saturday a month at like 10 o'clock at night Um you can tweet along with an episode of Columbo with like about 30 or 40 other people. And it's such a sort of exhilarated experience because you sort of like, you've got like, you know, sometimes I'm sitting with your laptop in front of me and you'll try, mention something and then somebody will reply to what you've said and you've got like, you know, like my phone just comes down, and it's dead good because you just do, it keeps bouncing back and forth like between what you're typing and then if somebody likes it or replies, it's like really good. This guy I think is on Twitter. I'm sure somebody in the tweet along said, um, I can't remember his name, which is terrible, but yeah, he's yeah, on Twitter and I was like, oh, it's that bloke. <laughs> but that's one thing that really makes Columbo though as well because I know a lot of TV shows obviously you know, they've got lots of casting involved in you know the supporting players and things like that but like there this projectionist role you know you think you know it wouldn't be quite as good as like the main killer or something but even he's like a brilliant actor and a lot of the other people there are, and like he just these simple scenes like this so you know, he's having some coffee off this guy and stuff, and I really feel like that th those those little moments make Columbo. Where I think sometimes when people have tried rip off Columbo or try to do a similar thing, and and that's one thing as well. I really what's that say? The real estate handbook. Did say San Dimas? Uh, yeah, but one thing about Columbo though, and that, it's, it's shame me age. I don't know, but. Um, 
it's one of the most relaxing. If I fall asleep in about five minutes, it's because um, I don't know why. There's just something about it. you wouldn't think a show about murder, like and you know, especially if there's like a gunshot in it, like there was earlier on, that it can be so relaxing. I think it just puts you like in a certain frame of mind, and oh, it doesn't start off with Colombo and usually see some you know crazy ass thing happening that and but it's usually quite slow paced like i don't think has there ever really been like a proper car chase in a colombo or like a fist fight or something but it's like somehow it feels like there's loads and loads of stuff going on but there's nothing that like really sort of you know, gets your heart racing or you feel like just running around it's just like it's like the world's most thrilling boring brilliant show <laughs> Uh, but what's really funny about this though as well and don't get me wrong like when I've worked in cinemas for about two weeks and like I've you know worked you know you know sort of passing the popcorn out and I've even you know cleaned the screens at like you know six in the morning and stuff like that and I've been in there like you know at half eleven at night and you know past midnight even I think and you know it's one of them jobs where don't get me wrong it's still such a thankless job like but when you see it like this where you know, you'd have to do real changes and, you know, like that little trick of picking the coin up off the floor and things like that. I do think how it's a completely different experience in a lot of ways. Like when I, like cause I've got, you know, sometimes so stuck in my ways and I feel like this, you know, it's, it, I have to do like so many coaches, I don't know what I said and I haven't said, but um, I feel like, you know, you go to the cinema years ago and you just pay, you see the post trips, like you pay, you go sit down, you'd watch the film and come out and, and then like now it's kind of like there is no posters it's allocated seating you know it, you're watching a digital print it's it just it's such a weird it's like it's like this is the cinema but this isn't the cinema although it's still brilliant Columbo is just uh, coming now is uh... <laughs> the and but this is again another one of those Columbo traits or tropes so another t another word beginning with t but again how he pretty much from the instant he walks in the room he seems to like know who the killer is and even that i think is like such a great thing that like you know you could have loads of detective shows where you know they're interviewing different people and you know they've gained clues and all this kind of stuff but like i was like colombo intuition just like yeah that's the guy and i think his name's robert Cl Robert Culp, I think, and again on these like Columbo tweet along is like I didn't realize how many people really seem to like him, and like you know he's a great actor and everything, but like I always think like sometimes when I like an episode or a certain instalment of something, I almost feel like it's the one that nobody likes or nobody's heard of. What's really funny though, because some of these uh, statues and the monuments behind him, it'd be kind of funny to. Say, oh, that was one thing as well. Somebody posted, I think it was, I'm sure it was on Twitter, but there was a painting in one of the. It'd been in like two episodes of Columbo and two episodes of the Rockford Files, and it'd be free if that painting was in there. I must have said this in loads and loads of different places, but one thing I do love about Columbo is, and especially when almost anything from the 70s but Columbo to be fair like that always just got a drink behind that bar how anybody got through the 70s without dying of alcohol poisoning is unbelievable <laughs> got the uh, karate trophy there from the uh, 1984 Karate Kid. But that's what's funny though, because like there I just remember that line and it was literally just from like when it was on in the background like an hour ago. But again, I do find fascinating how memory works. That like, say, I can remember watching this when I was a really little kid, and obviously I didn't see it when it was very first broadcast, you know, 1973, because I say I wasn't born for another seven months. But it kind of just like I must have seen this when I was like six or seven or something like that. And I, if you'd have said to me like yesterday, name it a line from this, I probably wouldn't have been able to, even though I've seen it loads. And like I said, it's one of my favourite episodes. And I so distinctly remember seeing that subliminal image being put into the frame and I used to pride myself on when I used to go to the cinema 
I used to look for the real changes in the Q dots coming up and stuff like that. Even when I was like a really little kid, I remember it was just something that always used to catch my eye. And sometimes when a film's been transferred onto video, occasionally you see the real changes, especially on like VHS and things. So it's kind of like, I remember stuff like that. And, you know, I remember like the, the you know, the, um, the uh, millimeter sort of the uh, the bullet the bullet the bullet adapter thing it's a, I, I remember it but I don't remember what it was called but yeah then like oh uh, like lines of dialogue of uh, like that'll probably stick with me now like yeah uh, you know for ages till next week anyway. What's me now there pinch trap shoot as well that say something where. I feel like it's a certain thing, probably because I, you know, I don't hang around people who wear suits that often. But um, I feel like they haven't seen a Prince striped suit in real life for forever. Do do they still make them? I don't know when he just said the uh, just one more thing. I know that's something that's in every single episode of Columbo, but oh, actually, it's just popped in that I must have said this somewhere else, but I'll say it because it's very pertinent to this Columbo commentary. But I can't believe that, as far as I know, Peter Falk wasn't the very first Columbo. And then, this was probably about six years ago now, I saw Dirt Benedict being Columbo on stage, like in Cheshire. It was like, Things you never thought you'd see. I might have turned the tape recorder on before I went into the lobby, before I ever saw the bug. As a matter of fact, I think I turned it on directly after screening. But I actually went into the lobby and I didn't see the bug. Yeah, I didn't see the bug. Thank you very much. An orange carpet. The little, the chimes. But that's one, another thing as well, though about like the use of music and mu music oh there's uh, the house from the text chainsaw massacre family <laughs> Jeff found women sitting down they're attractive <laughs> uh, yeah but like even that that sort of universal t sort of music and I, I don't mean universal as in everybody although it kind of is and this is probably completely my imagination but sometimes like if you watch like the incredible hulk or like battlestar galactical anything that was made by universal or sometimes warner brothers films from like the 80s and if they were recorded like the music was recorded in the same building or by the same orchestra or using the same equipment but they're so distinctly that thing. Like I feel like you could play a two-second piece of the Columbo, you know, some of those like let's say that those chimes just between those last two scenes, or like I say that very first intro piece to God, what was that name of that episode with um, Lesnar Nielsen and where that risk goes through the window? <laughs> yeah, but that just intro piece of music there. Like I just feel like you can just instantly or like just me speaking personally, obviously. But I can hear that music or just hear like a little bit of like say some of the incidental music used in a Columbo and it doesn't sound like anything else in a lot of ways. And that's one thing as well, talking about like this scene here is quite sort of ordinary for want of a better phrase. But I do kind of like in some of the episodes of Columbo though. Oh, the scenes are just so out there and like they're almost like dream sequences or they were used with that weird watery effect I don't know why I'm miming it with me and this like watery effect that goes over the the camera somehow there but again it's that thing again where to about like oh we, we didn't have that kind of thing then like you know I don't know they did some of these effects in like the early 70s oh god all the pumpkins there I mean, how heavy those CRT TVs must have been. This was probably about two years ago now, but um, as about pretty much the last two CRT TVs that I knew people were using. Or I think I do. I think my dad's still got a CRT TV in his kitchen, which he never uses. But um, I, I, somebody had a thirty-three wide, a thirty-three inch wide screen TV. Is for me to say, and me and my mate went 
you know, because he's just broken me and went and moved for this person. And it was so heavy. It was like, it's, it's so easy to forget sometimes just how heavy CRT TVs are. Even like little portable ones. And that's one thing about Columbo though as well. And occasionally I will put it like saying, you know, these tweet alongs or just if anybody's in the same room as me when watching Columbo. But I think sometimes you could watch something like this and I think sometimes, you know, massive generalization, but if you're watching it with like a young kid or sometimes some of these adults that laugh at everything that's more than two weeks old, it's easy sometimes to like look at like say, like oh he's wearing like this mustard colored jacket. But I do kind of like miss in a way that like I feel like that I couldn't wear a yellow coat like and it's such a shame that like the 70s and the 80s like well, I think the clothes haven't taken nowhere near as bad as people's you know occasionally you'll see somebody's like oh my god you know you can't something you can't help it but like it's just it was so like such a liberating time that like you know you could just yeah bum around in a yellow coat like why not I never get one, so I said to my niece, I says, "Why? Well, I think I just watched Dick Tracy like for like the tenth time, and I said, oh, I'll have a yellow coat, and my niece goes, yeah, I just bought one today. <laughs> it's like, there you go. What's funny, I just noticed that but the box that said D B on it, but it reminded me of there used to be a TV shop called D E R, at least I think that was it just reminded me of that logo. And what's really funny though as well because that looks like just a real supermarket. Like, you know, they probably like just went in there like at four o'clock in the morning on like a Sunday or something. Or probably two o'clock in the afternoon knowing uh, how old seventies T V shows are made. Like that, the CCTV cameras were low enough that you could just mess around with them. But that's not, that camera isn't that big. When you think if that was a real camera, you know, I've got a funny feeling that it probably was. No information about that at with. But it doesn't look that, you know, sometimes they say you look at the multi RT TVs and they're like huge. But you think it's pretty revolutionary technology for 1973. If it was real, I thought it said Twin, twin Pack, Twin Peaks. <laughs> That on that um, twin no. I don't know what maybe it's like crisps. There's a guy messing with the melons there. And even that like I feel like, you know, oh you know, in my day, but look at how many people are working in that shop. Like I say again, I know it's not quite quite real, but you know I think it's uh, the echo of what was going on in that time period. It's like sometimes as well to work with that, things like Jewel and things like that. But sometimes you watch Columbo and say, somebody will come out and pump the gas. And I'm like, to me now, I'm pretty sure, and my memory's pretty sketchy sometimes, I can't ever remember that happening in the UK. I'm, I'm sure it probably did. What's always really funny though as well now, because even though a lot of companies, uh, just as I say that, there's a guy in the background, but... Uh, I feel like, you know, you watch stuff in the 70s and it was just women, supposedly women that did the shopping. This is an amazing part here though, where it says cigarette department. I mean, how crazy is that? That like, even though it's still technically legal to sell cigarettes, it's like, look at all those cigarettes behind. If they're all cigarettes there behind, I think they are, because I can see some Marlboro down there. But it's just so amazing to me though, that like, even though I don't smoke or, you know, like the old cigar once in a blue moon, but like just how times have changed like you know in, in 40 years uh, but like you know like now you can't even show cigarettes that you have to cover them up and everything like that I'll, i do kind of think though as well like i was just saying though like i, I actually i don't know if i was saying this but i feel like i was but the more things change the more they stay the same but like that i don't know i guess if you go, if you've got a shop with a load of stuff on shelves, what can it look like? It's probably not going to change that much. But I almost feel like that that could be today. Like, you know, sort of. Do you, do you have... <laughs> this is a great shot here. Look at this. It's like uh, it's like Kubrick, isn't it? 
That's one thing though, I've got to admit though, that like, I do feel a little bit ignorant here in this regard, that like, if I'm talking to somebody and they say they don't know who directed a film or they don't know who writes someone, I'm like, oh, look at you, isn't it? Oh. But like I say, I'd easily say this is probably my top five episodes of Columbo. And without checking on the internet, I don't know who wrote or directed it, and that's really but there's packs of meat there. American packets of meat always leaving like them yellow packets with uh, was it was that this a watermelon oh six, watermelon oh five? Are they individually numbered? <sighs> That's uh, the poppy, the dog is barking, one of my neighbour's dogs. She's going to go for a walk. <laughs> What's me though there, because that, that could actually uh, show a sign of when this was filmed. If there was pumpkins in the shop, it was uh, September, October time. I was just going through the months in my head then, so I think September is before October, right? <laughs> One thing though as well, on like, it, you know, that's sort of preaching to the converted, anybody who's listening to this commentary, especially this far into it, chances are. But I do kind of love that about Columbo, like when he pretty much knows exactly how it's sort of, how the murders happened and, and things like that. But I love how he'll like, oh, I, like, oh he'll, he genuinely will be trying to figure something out, but like when the when the murder will be like, well, well, maybe it could be this, and then he's like, oh yeah, that explains it, like, you know, and then they, like, they get, like, they give way too more information than they should have done, you know? That's one thing as well, like that. I just started watching it for like about 10 seconds, but like, say, there's something, and I don't believe this for absolute bit like subliminal imagery and things like that, and I don't believe this for a second, but if somebody said to me, and I'm completely just pulling this theory out of thin air almost, but like, as we said, oh, in Calypso to Columbo, there's something uh, like in the way it's made or in the soundtrack that makes you hear sort of just get hypnotized by it, and like, say, there's this. And I've heard a load of filmmakers say this that the the edits are rhythm and like you know the, like, the there's like a a natural pacing that way you edit things and the flow of things. So I know it's not beyond the realms of possibility that like say that you know things are edited to you know there's certain beats that they have to hit and you know the editor probably edit most of these scenes the same and everything. But there is just something like there, just though. Just two guys in a supermarket, and it just sort of like it's like the most relaxing thing in the world. That's a re that's a shot though. I mean, not that exact shot, but that kind of style of shot of outside a building and that slow zoom in uh, is something that really, again, just makes me think so much of like you know old TV and like saying not in like a you know like a you know mickey taking way just it really makes me sort of like oh that's nice oh guys can't try and bribe me don't do that none of that though man i'll this is like a, a totally you can tell he's a geek he's got no concepts of the real world he's getting into bribe this guy who he's you knows he's killed somebody i'll go bribe this guy that looks like a james bond film in a room full of guns and knives <laughs> It's a Columbo 70s ashtray there. It's actually quite small by uh, Columbo standards. I won't be surprised if in um, 1973 money 
that suit he's wearing probably cost more than the last yeah, well that's probably the wrong phrase I was going to say for the price it cost to buy that suit I probably brought nearly all my clothes in the last five years <laughs> which shows why I dressed like a tall tramp <laughs> Don't do that, no. Well, it's, a bit, it's a bit like Chris Nolan with the 35 mil prints, but which Batman film is it? The uh, Dark Knight, where the guy finds out that like um, Wayne Industries have made the Batmobile, and he's like, and Morgan Freeman's like, you're gonna bribe this vigilante who's known for like sneaking up on people and sort of you know taking him out, like kind of thing. It's like, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I think there there was well like that sort of shot of you know, seeing that car in the distance in front of the other car that's uh, like across the street. I think that's one thing, like when you watch, say, anything, but like, say, especially like TV shows, I think people think, oh, TV, it's not like film. But these were so far ahead of the game, like now when you watch something like on Netflix or something like that, and they basically are like movies, but really, I don't see what the difference is between this and, say, a movie because you know they were all shot on film they were like shot on location sets and all these different things and you know big actors in there big well, no, no not big big act big <laughs> uh, but you know big star actors and things like that so so talking about big it's a big car usually these kind of scenes though now where you know like say I've seen this episode loads of oh yeah we just get the old credit card and go in but um, uh, this is one of those uh, this is usually the bits where now where I fell asleep by now and sort of uh, I've only ever seen this footage twice before now <laughs> but that is say something though that like like in a lot of ways I even said this to somebody the other day I can't remember I was saying it to uh, now but in a lot of ways, like I still feel like really young, like you know, touch wood, but like you know, I feel like yeah, I can still. Oh, oh that's funny, high plane drifter though, a one dollar. What does what does one dollar? If that guy uh, who got the money at the start was the guy from Trading Place, he could, he could go see that film five times, or with four other people. Uh, yeah, but in a lot of ways, I don't really feel that old. And then literally, if somebody said to me. You know, excluding some incredible, like if I win the lottery and I can suddenly go skydiving, hang around supermodels or something like that. But if somebody says to me now, like, you know, what are the top ten things you like doing? It's like going to fall asleep watching Columbo in the afternoon. It's like it doesn't get much better than that. Well, that's always um, like a quote-unquote weird thing in Colombo. If there's like two murders, I know it's happened in a, a few Colombos, but like it's like because you like watching two two episodes of Colombo simultaneously. Oh. 
But isn't it kind of amazing though that like I kind of love as well the pictures to use for these subliminal images like this one here I think it's like a burger or something. But it's like I say it does kind of look quite appealing, but it's kind of like uh, it's like. Like now, you just couldn't use that picture of a burger. Be like people are like, oh, what's that? <laughs> to be fair, I could go with that burger now. Oh god, the guy's suddenly come in and he's like, he knows. Well, that's what's really funny though as well, like, sort of saying about, like, uh, certain Columbo things that, you know, you can sort of, you know, you know they're going to come a mile off, like, in the sense, but that's always a great thing in Columbo as well. When you see, like, the, the murderer knows exactly, like, that Columbo's onto him and it just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper and I really love as well the fact though that sort of like every single episode of Columbo is like this where for the most part the the bad guy is like oh Columbo I love you yeah, yeah, well, you need it. if you need anything just let me know and then like by that they were about 47 minutes into it the, the, the bad guy's like what the hell do you want Columbo why are you here like, why have you come around my house at 4 in the morning <laughs> Talking about like Columbo though as well, though. well obviously, duh. Uh, but like, is he, him and his wife just doing stuff Ooh, 24 hours a day? Because I always feel like they're, or they just said, oh I've read them, that book and uh, you know, my wife we're listening to some like opera record or we're watching something on TV and he's at work all the time, Mrs Columbo's doing whatever she does, and I've even seen Mrs Columbo and I'm not even sure. <laughs> Uh, but that's funny as well, talking about Mrs. Columbo. I actually should have dropped my while I still can do. Uh, stay tuned, folks. Um, but an episode, uh, do a commentary for an episode of Mrs. Columbo because that's one of them shows where I almost feel like I'd, I'm, I'm, I really imagined it. I really... Because I, I think it was a special feature on season four when it was released in the UK. It was like a bonus episode of Mrs. Columbo and I don't think I ever got the DVD. And I was like... I know you'd see like you know, little mentions of it here and there or like a still frame of it and it's only more recently that I've seen like about four or five episodes and it's actually pretty good but you can see like why the you know why it might well actually I think there's been two full series of it so you know it's done, done more than a lot of my favourite TV shows. And that's one thing that it's kind of incredible out there. They just walked in from, you know, the corridor to the left, and I know that's that's how films work, mm. uh, well, that's how editing works. But I do think it's fascinating that, like, because obviously you can't really film in a lift, you know, you're, you're incredibly difficult. But for the most part, like if this was just on TV and I wasn't doing the quality and stuff, probably would even have wanted in the commentary. But how you sort of like, oh well, I get, oh the lift didn't actually move, or didn't it move. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was, I guess it was meant to be done. But like, I feel like there. But again, it's like seamless sort of editing that sort of. Like, I do like to pride myself on sort of. Oh yeah, I know how editing works. I know how storyboard works, and I know how like screenplay or tally plays work. Well, that's actually funny when you. Excuse me, if you see the phrase tally play, and it's kind of like you know, it's like almost oh, that like a screenplay. <laughs>
and even this though, like the way that like when he sets him up by using the exact same technique and that's such a great Columbo sort of script writing device and even though it's been done so many times in episodes of Columbo and, and you know, you, like I say, you know what's coming more or less, you know, I think, you know, if every Columbo ends, you know, okay, oh, no, I guess sometimes there's like the uh, Janet Lee episode when does he let her quote unquote get away with it and stuff. So, you know, they're not all the same, but that's the thing I love about Columbo though, is the fact that that's where he's like that picture there and just behind him would be funny. Even on, even on the TV, this big, I can't tell, is it him or just, uh, I see there's a picture of a house on the, uh, what's funny though, that gold plate on the wall though. And that's one thing about like, sort of that, the barometer there but I kind of like you just can't imagine now like maybe barometer but like and then like gold plates like that was something like my mum would put up where you go in somebody's house and their parents would have stuff like that and I just can't imagine anybody younger than about 45 <laughs> doing that Too salty. Oh, he made it deliberately salty, so he'd have to go get drinks. That's a funny coincidence, the lattice of coincidence, but sort of kind of not really, because it's a bit like going in friends' houses. I was thinking of my mate Salty, I've mentioned on a few other things, and his uh, mum is the kind of person that would have uh, gold plates on the wall, and he just had salty. No, I feel like I must have done, but I don't know if I've ever seen a picture of Columbo and sort of the main bad guy just offset, like just sort of, you know, I mean, like a hot dog together or a, a, a cigarette, I know they said that. <gasps> Which is a British slang to them for cigarettes. <laughs> And even like those faucets that they have in America, that's one thing though where, you know, I think they might have had one at my local school, my local school, my school. <laughs> um, but I can't really ever remember going in many public buildings and they're just like a water thing there. I swear, I can't remember that line there. Could have been two prints. It's like, bloody hell. I think he has a, bill, a billionaire. <laughs> it is kind of amazing though, now and again, talking about like you watch something like this and how sort of quaint it is. But like, say, sometimes though, when you look at like, say, a film from the 70s or, you know, film from when I grew up in the 80s, and, um, you know, there'd be something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, and it's like it was released on. 3,000 cinemas or something, you're like, how the hell did they manage to do that? <laughs> I do think that's like one thing that she looks familiar actually, but that's um, that could be a good mashup of clips. That's a great shot there of the people in the um, the room above. And uh, but again, that's what I was saying about like say, 
you know, in the big scheme of things, it's like if you said to a few people, just stay mill around in that room and, you know, if they say action and, you know, put your foot away, you know, it's not exactly like, you know, Ben here or something. But I do think, that, and then the lights went off and stuff, I do think there's just enough going on there to sort of make you just forget sometimes that what you're seeing is as elaborate as it is. I think it's when I did the Death Wish 3 commentary and there's a couple of shots where you'd see like Charles Bronson walking out of a doorway and you just see all these people in the windows above and things like that. And I must have seen that film so many times in like this episode of Columbo where, you know, you've got eye out like a big room like that and even like a simple shot like that. Where if somebody just said to me now, I know it's different when you're universal pictures and you Charlie Big Potatoes, but like, you know, you've got to employ like, you know, six professional actors and, you know, a camera crew and lighting and all the rest of those, like, oh my God, and like a location and everything. I think it's a big, a big theatre and it's a big cin cinema theatre. <laughs> Hobnail boots, that's not a very. Uh, I can talk about words you're near in certain places. Uh, find another TV show or film where somebody mentions hobnail boots. Just realised I don't think I've got a random crew member, so. Uh, custom crew. It's just loading, I'm just getting my finger hovering over it. Picked one, so we're just uh, oh, I like this way doing the uh, they talked about uh, all the ghosts coming at the end of Ghostbusters. That was brilliant. <laughs> so why does she value that? When they talking about uh, Judgment Day. Can't believe that as well. I'll just timestamp this commentary, but in about a week's time, Train Spotting Two's coming out. And for some reason, they called it T2. So, I'm like, ha, didn't they know? There was another film called T2. I was funny though, talking about like how years ago, you go to the cinema and there'd be like, uh, you know, posters that. There was four, they got one film on, four posters for it. At least they got the right poster. I almost feel like that should be David Warner, the guy on the right there. He looks like David Warner's twin brother. <laughs> oh yeah, that could be a good scene. Like, like I started saying something, I think I got distracted, but that could be a good like mashup series of clips that like sort of Shane and the bad, all the bad guys starting off really cheery and then getting progressively <laughs> angry. <laughs> There's a, a Pac-Man just behind him there. His head's in the way of it now. <gasps> yeah, there, that like tape holder, it, it reminded me of a Pac-Man or the head of a piranha. Behind Columbo, then. I think it is. I, I actually now I've seen everything. <laughs> I guess you got to go, right? So like there, they're them, like saying them little keyboard things and, you know, almost like a bit like Friday 13th or uh, Halloween. Actually, speaking of which, it's Friday 13th in two days and in Blairstown, New Jersey, where Friday 13th is filmed, uh, you can watch Friday 13th in that very place. So, that's pretty cool, though. 
you know they've just stumbled you know as I was just going to joke saying they've stumbled on the set of Enter the Dragon Enter the Dragon came out in 1973 it's a bit like that place where John Saxon gets um, those heavies come and try and beat him up But again, that's one of these things about, say, Colombo, though. Oh my god, that's brilliant. <laughs> but again, it's like, say, oh, it's been, you know, indoors, outdoors, nighttime, golf course, cinema, you know, it's kind of. Like I say, it's kind of like there's nothing going on, and at the same time, oh my god, that's amazing. But like when I was saying about, I feel like that you can really tell what decade something was filmed in. And again, this could just be uh, pure nostalgia. It could just be the film stock it was filmed on. It could just be like, you know, when I'm watching it, like it's frame four, three, like how it's supposed to be. But just looking at that sky, and not like seeing necessarily the clothes, just, I just feel like, just as soon as that, you look there, that looks like the 1970s to me. Like, and even though I've never been to America, I've never really seen, like, you know, the smog or anything like that. I don't know if that's where it is. But that just looks like the mid-70s. I, I don't know what that means, but it really does look like that to me. Like I said before, it's always funny. So I can remember this bit on the golf course. So I was, I was going to do But I feel like that sort of this is the bit where some of those other bits, like high plane drift, have been on at the cinema, and sort of obviously the you know the bit at the end and stuff. But it's like one of those really weird things. Like I said about Columbus, so I don't know if it's like so I'm usually watching him half asleep or wrong over or or both. <laughs> uh, that sort of. Like, well, you know, that's, that's like a consideration because even if I'm just watching him, just like, say, just completely sober, that sort of, I feel like the uh, the, the uh, commentary sound uh, game past there that probably picked up on uh, the old microphones. But yeah, I feel like that this beer is like, sort of, I feel like I can remember it at the same time. I feel like the, I sort of can't. And as well, though, is it kind of crazy, though, that, like, he's saying, oh, I've never spoke to this woman. If they check with the phone company, he can check from his phone that he'd phoned her. <laughs> or somebody who'd somebody's used his phone and phoned her. I know everything reminds me of a Richard Pryor joke, but uh, just every said that then, um, when Richard Pryor says, don't admit to having an affair, especially if you're married, if you've got any brains. <laughs> If that golf course is still there. I'm sure it's funny though. It, that looks suspiciously not like a golf course the more I think about it. But they want one of the best golf courses in like LA or something. I think Colombo was looking at him then. But that wasn't up until about, and this and this is how like I'm always, um, I'm a slow learner. <laughs> Don't know what that's got to do with anything. But um, to quote the whole horse, no, but. Um, it was not until about a year, year and a half ago, that I had a go at golf, a couple of, a couple of putts, strikes, where you drive the ball like that. That one's technical, technical term.
I love that there, the way he said there's no nickel. I mean, it's so great, though, because, like, and, and again, it's so ridiculous, really, that, like, Columbo just have to be in that room when the guy showed him the, the real train, the, the trick he uses for the real chain with the nickel falling on the floor. But it's so weird, like, there, like, where that guy really should be scot free. Uh, and it's just like, no, it's another. <laughs> But like what's amazing about that though as well because again even though I've seen this episode like a million times or you know quite a few times it's one of those ones where like you know the more you think about it like well how would he have gotten that cinema for change the real how did he you know how would he have got in and you know like I know nowadays you could probably you probably could walk in and change the reels if you or change the uh, change the film if you really wanted to but I mean, you see how many people working in that supermarket, if there was any off that amount, there'd be like about 400 people working in that cinema. That's a great shot there. I mean, that just, that does just make me feel like, like kind of, you know, ah, oh, that nostalgia kick. I was gonna say it makes me feel warm, and it suddenly felt really cold because it's freezing outside. <laughs> I can see that, like, you know, feel like the wind almost coming through the windows, even though the windows are closed. his wife <gasps> there is a there is a cat there this time I can hear him I see a young uh, Steven Spielberg there taking the pictures. I mean, this is so great though, like when, like you know what's coming, it'll be interesting to go on the car move database to see what that uh, car is there. I see a uh, young Steven Spielberg didn't have a beard, so it'd be like uh, a youngish Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Oh god, the battery's running low, oh no, it's the, it's the typical home stretch run. That's a good shot, reminds me of uh, Bruce Lee, the man, the myth. If you can hear the wind there, folks, but it's uh, I hope that's kind of picked up on the uh, the mic. It's always funny because I think I did it when I did the uh, rating smash. That was the Mr. Allen's Opus commentary. Uh, you could hear like helicopters and planes because it was summertime. You had the windows open, ah. and they. Nothing. <laughs> it's like, the just said, what is that? And I said, uh, a, cal a calibration. That's what it was called. What did I call it? <laughs> I can't remember now. I couldn't remember what it was called and I couldn't remember what I called it.
Boom. If they actually exist. Oh. Oh. Always remember that shot they've been looking at the actual um the slide. Here's the cat. He's trying to tell me something. And as well, though, that's like say something that more so than a lot of things like, but like people manically laughing is a very 70s thing. And he's not manically laughing, he's manically smiling, which is a, a sentence uh, I've got to admit I don't normally say. I always think this one is actually, oh, I said this, I meant to. Uh, Richard Quinn is the guy that directed it. And Steve J, oh wow, Steve J Canal, well, there you go. That's why it's so good, it's really the A team guy. And my random crew member is Ronald Levine, is the editor. I was almost thought his name might come on then. Oh, well. And he is known for Power Rangers. He's done 90s Power Rangers. Dick D. Benedict. Oh, that's weird. There's the cigarette department. Oh, God, I can't guys see me. Come on. Oh, I just thought it said Ronald Levine there. 36 things he's edited. And the Columbo has just finished. Yeah, Power Rangers, well, loads of Power Rangers. Power Rangers, Diagnosis, Murder, Time Tracks, Jake and the Fat Man. Loads of TV stuff. Space Academy. 10 episodes of Columbo. The Bold Ones, The New Doctors, 1969. Brazil. Um, it's completely finished now, the, all the film's gone through, if it was filmed, but it's not. <laughs> uh, but as Columbo always says, that famous catchphrase, keep it locked. <laughs>